Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately the man stood up, rolled up the bed and left her his house, giving thanks to God. Today, we'll study Chapter 8 in the Seventh-day Adventist Fourth Quarter, 2023 Quarterly. If you have a printed copy, you can follow along and study. If not, you can download the quarterly from the App Store to your phone or your tablet or your computer. My name is Earl McCubrey, and I'm from the O.C. Grace Seventh-day Adventist Church in Garden Grove, California, where I serve as an elder. In Lesson 8, we're reminded of book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 17 to 26, where Luke tells of a time when Jesus was teaching Pharisees and teachers of the law from all the towns of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem in somebody's house. The power of the Lord was there to heal them. A group of men brought a paralyzed man on a bed to ask Jesus for healing. The house was so crowded, the men couldn't get the bed through the door. So, they did what any of us would do. They climbed up on the roof of the house, and they tore a hole in the roof, right where Jesus was standing, and they lowered the paralyzed man down in front of him. Jesus saw their faith, and said to the paralyzed man, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Well, the scribes and the Pharisees said, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus read their minds, and he responded to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins? Then he said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately the man stood up, rolled up the bed, and left her his house, giving thanks to God. We can see three things going on here that directly impact us. First, the men carrying the paralyzed man were helping someone who had no way of helping himself. They gave of themselves for the good of this man. Was he a family member or a friend or a random stranger? Well, we're not told. Could have been any of those. This is a central theme of Lesson 8, being available to help others who could not help themselves, just as Jesus was. Secondly, the paralyzed man and the men carrying him knew that Jesus would heal the man. It was their belief that enabled Jesus to heal. Belief in Jesus' healing made it possible and you can find many other places in, in the New Testament where Jesus healed people. And when people thanked him for it, he said, it was your, your faith, your belief that healed you. Faith and belief are central to being healed. Third, there were naysayers, people maintaining that this healing could not be, just like there are naysayers today trying to get in the way of faith. Things are no different today, except that we could not have gotten away with making such a big hole in a stranger's roof. The central observation of Lesson 8 is that God often helps people through the efforts of other people. If you find yourself in need and you ask God for help, he may well deliver help to you through the efforts of other people. When that happens, Remember to be gracious and thankful for that which you have received. 
I certainly know that as I get older, I get more and more opportunities to thank the medical people who helped me with this is and that's that happen from time to time. And it's so, it's so rewarding to be able to feel so grateful to them for their help uh, that God rendered to me through their hands. On the other hand, be ready to act when God asks you to help a person who's in need. Among the richest experiences that we can have in life is receiving communication from God through the Holy Spirit to go and to act for a good purpose in another person's life. Another is when you have had a need that God responded to through the efforts of another person. These are instances where you have actually had a one-to-one -one experience with God himself. Certainly, most of us have wit witnessed blessed physical healing and a return to health following prayer. Emotional healing can be much quicker, especially when a person asks for and receives help. In my own journey, I presented myself to a Seventh-day Adventist pastor 13 years ago and laid out the difficulty that I was having in forming any sort of healthy relationship with people. There I was at 63 years of age, unable to have community with other people. His advice to me was to study Jesus Christ and then not to worry and let God help me. So I went home and I cracked the Bible open and I got to work and I studied Jesus Christ. And people noticed quite a change in me. I had faith that Jesus' teachings would heal me. And they did. Many of the difficulties people face are centered in the mind. Many of the physical maladies that people suffer begin with conditions of the mind. Immediately upon changing the mind and the belief system, the problem clears up. An example is given in Mark chapter 1, verses 23 to 28, where Jesus encountered a man with an unclean spirit. We can consider the unclean spirit to be some idea embedded in the mind of a person that turns a person from being their best into a person who's being their worst. Being their worst can manifest itself as being violent or being fraudulent and dishonest, being depressed or abandoning the family or getting involved with drugs or alcohol or perhaps inappropriate sex, many bad things. The unclean spirit occupying the man used the man's voice to cry out to Jesus, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsed the man, cried out with a loud voice, and he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? For the authority he commands, even the unclean spirits, and they obey him? And immediately his fame spread throughout the region around Galilee. Key to the success of Jesus' efforts was the man's belief that Jesus could and would heal him. Though Jesus is not walking the earth as he was 1,990 years ago, his healing is available to each of us today because he continues to live in our hearts. We need only believe in Jesus and his healing power to also be free to the demons that trouble so many of us. Yes, many of the troubles that afflict people originate in the mind and they're curable by belief in Jesus' power to heal and by making sincere requests. For those mental and physical conditions that can be cured by belief and petition, recovery is without cost and without the side effects of drugs. There is no experience comparable to having experienced personal healing from God through Jesus Christ. That healing is deeply personal and leads to unmeasurable appreciation for the gift of well-being. It frees a person to now carry the message of God's love and provision to others who are in need, whether mental, emotional, or physical, or perhaps all of them. 
Ministering to others in need is a key principle of lesson number eight. Well, thanks for tuning in. I look forward to our next session. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.